Hello and welcome to Ben's Addiction. Last week we worked on the BCM battery control module of R230 and we managed to fix the issue of not uh, getting the front battery charged up. So the module we installed ourselves to save money, a lot of money is working and charging the front battery. But the ECU soon realizes that there is no BCM installed on our car and it's going to throw a code and you will get the red battery warning light on your instrument cluster. So in order to get rid of that, this is the part two of the video and you can watch the part one over here. Let's go ahead and program a microcontroller to get rid of that red battery indicator. So straight away, let's go ahead with what we need. We need two very small and cheap modules. These are available on AliExpress. The first one is our microcontroller. It can be also called Mercedes emulator, which looks like this. And this one is the programmer of the emulator. So basically we need two packages coming from AliExpress. Uh, they come like this. And for the microcontroller, these are available in different colors, black, blue, red, and green. We are going to focus on green one because this is the least problematic and the easiest one to work on. I also have the blue board over here and just for your attention, but I'm not going to work on this one. I've, I was just curious to see what's the difference. So that's why I bought it. Also, these programmers come in two different or three different connector type. This is the old USB connector. You can get the connector USB-C connector and normal USB. So depending on what cable you have and what is uh, easier for you to work with. I put the details of these two boards in the description of the video so you can go ahead and buy one for yourself. These are not going to cost you more than 10 bucks. So it's very cheap. And for what it's going to do, it's a real bargain. These are made to work with W166, W222 and uh, cars like that and W205 and 217. What else we need? We need strippers, we need a cable for our programmer, we need some uh, solder and flux, we need a cutter, and we need some wires and cables and basic tools like that. So need a Windows computer to program your STM uh, microcontroller. The first thing we need over here is that uh, we are going to only use H1 and L1. The next important point is over here, uh, you see R2, R1, and then uh, right in the middle is the S5. We, this is a, actually a jumper and we need to get rid of this jumper. So these two uh, small uh, circuit board wires should not be connected. So let's get rid of that too. These BMW W166, W222, and S4, and these should not be connected. They should not be jumped. So make sure you don't have these connected either. I understand that you get uh, two black wires and two red wires, but if you check these with your multimeter, you will see that the two blacks are connected and the two reds are connected as well. So let's get rid of uh, one of the black one and one of the red ones, it doesn't matter which one. And then we are going to cut our harness from here because we don't need this piece over here. We are actually going to use it to program, to make a connection between our programmer to our emulator board. So let's get rid of this one. So now it looks much more neat and not gonna be confusing. Then what we need here, we definitely need this side, the female side, and we're going to cut these wires and we end up with these two boards. So what I have here is the pinout of this uh, programmer because it's very hard to read, but if you focus with lots of light, on this board, you will see the writings are boot zero, RX, TX, VCC. We don't need this uh, pin over here. And then the final one is ground. So six pins with these names. So in order to program our emulator, we are going to connect the programmer to it. And the way we are going to do this, the easiest way is probably to use this cable. 
Uh, in this way, we can use this securely to connect it to our programmer just like that and use these wires or use these pins to connect it to our uh, emulator. And that makes our job easier. And then if you keep this harness for yourself, maybe you can program one for your friend and that makes the job much easier. Now with this drawing, it makes it much easier. You know what you're going to connect these wires to. So basically it's a puzzle now, which is very easy to solve. You need to connect all the wires, boot zero to boot zero, Rx to Tx and Tx to Rx, VCC to VCC and ground to ground. That's all we need to do and doesn't matter how you do it. You can see over here that I removed the jumper between these two. And it's easy to see with this amount of zoom. So you need to do that as well. Also at the same time, this female has a connector like this. So what we need only is five. So I'm going to cut five from here. This is four and this is five. going to insert it to here. So five is only left. I'm not going to confuse myself and I'm going to solder this on this board. And then I'm going to shrink them. We have connected our programmer to the uh, emulator and now we're going to program it. One thing before connecting it to power, we need to make sure our pinout is correct. So we're going to check every single one of these again because we just don't want to do this twice. The first thing we need is we need to go to the ST website to download the STM32 Q programmer. You need to register on this uh, website. The registration is free. So uh, go to this website, register and get the software depending on your system. If you have Mac, Linux or Windows, you can get these softwares. I click on get latest and download the latest software and, and install it. Installation is easy and I'm not going to uh, explain on that. The second thing we need is our program. This program is available on the github.com and I provide you with the link. So basically you need to go to this address and in the firmware uh, folder, you'll find a bin file. And this is a free file for you as well. And without this file, I was never able to actually make this video or uh, program my STM32 microcontroller. So download this and the file will be like this. And this is the STM32 Q programmer downloaded. So basically you need these two files and then install the Q programmer. When you install the Q programmer, uh, you will have such icon on your desktop. And when you click on it, you will have the program uh, running. When you open the program, you need to go to this section over here. It is called the erasing and programming. And then over here, you need to choose your connection type, which is UART. And if you are using the ST link, to, prov uh, to program a blue board, you need to use this ST-Link uh, USB connector. But UART, and then you need to figure out on what uh, communication port the STM uh, is installed. 
To find out what port your FTDI is installed, you need to go to Device Manager and then uh, connect the USB of the FTDI to the port of your computer. And then you will obviously see uh, immediately on what port the FTDI is installed. In this case, it's COM8. So I'm going to choose COM8. So basically over here, I hit refresh and I choose COM8. Leave the other settings just like this. And for me, it worked with the read unprotected MCU. So I clicked on this one as well. And when you finish all the settings, connect. And it only takes a few seconds. As soon as you do that, you'll get another light flashing on the device and then you are ready to program it. To do so, just select uh, the bin file provided and then hit start programming. As soon as you do that, the counter underneath starts loading the program into your uh, chipset. At the same time, your module starts flashing And then if everything goes well, it says file download complete. Click OK. And then very important point over here, we need to disconnect this jumper here. The five volt jumper, if you don't do that, you wipe uh, all the program from uh, this module over here. So definitely pull this off before disconnecting anything and then disconnect. And now we are ready to install this on our uh, SL500 or SL class R230. Okay, in the last video we installed this BCM, our own BCM over here, and it's working perfectly fine. And it's keeping both of the batteries in the charge state because the charger is uh, actually connected to the rear battery. So the rear battery actually charges up the front battery on idle, which is not drawing a lot of current. I show you on the screen the in the past seven days, the charger has only used less than 100 watts. First, we need to identify our CAN high and CAN low. Both are set to uh, five volts, uh, channel one and channel two. I've connected the probe uh, to number six, which is CAN high, the yellow one, and number seven, pin number seven, uh, CAN low. So. Now we know which one is can high and can low. Number six is can high and number seven is can low. To connect the STM32, use three millimeter spade connectors uh, and terminate those wires. Uh, you can use number one pin over here and it's the brown one and it can provide you with the negative. The can high connect to number six and can low connect to number seven and then the positive, the 12 volt positive, you can get it from anywhere you want, but it should come from the rear battery. I've got it from my voltmeter from here because uh, this positive is always connected and negative is uh, actually switched from here. So I always have that 12 volts, which is now feeding my STM32. And for sure, after testing and after receiving my package from eBay, I have a small enclosure it's 70 millimeter by 50 millimeter, and I'm going to uh, enclose that nice and neatly in there. So it's not going to stay like that, but so far I do not have the enclosure for it. But this is basically how you connect your STM32 to the BCM connector. More important point over here, this uh, module consumes less than 20 milliamp, 500 milliamps a day, uh, which is, not too bad, but you need to eventually start your car and, and charge it so you don't get a drained battery. Okay, I've started the engine and with the car on stands and on an uneven level, I've got the ABS light. I've got the BCM emulator installed. So let's get this one off and then if I scroll to the 
fault code, you'll see that only fault code we've got is the ABC and not the battery. Start the engine. So you see, I've got two fault codes over here, ABC and ESP, but not the battery. So it's alternating between these two, and the ABC is very normal because I've got the car on uneven stands and jacks. That's another story that's going to be fixed next uh, in the next few videos, but as you can see, I do not have the battery red battery indicator anymore. I'm very happy with the result. It took me a while to figure out how to do this and I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you fix your cars and I hope this video helps you to fix your uh, BCM issue. As usual, thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing. Have a great day. Enjoy your Mercedes and bye. Phil.